Hey, welcome back to another video for our People List app. In this video, we're going to create the array adapter or the custom adapter that will be able to make this list appear. So we've uh, previously done a My Friends class, which is going to be very important in this video. My Friends class has a property called My Friends List. So the goal is to take this list of friends and put it into this uh, layout here so that each one of these rows becomes a new friend. So that's our goal. So we're going to have to create an adapter for this list. We're going to call it person adapter. So let's go into our Java folder, create a new Java class, and we'll call it person adapter. So an adapter has some very specific things that it must implement. So let's choose the keyword extends, and we're looking for the other keyword called base adapter. All right, so base adapter has some properties in this uh, interface that we must implement. So I'm trying to get the little light bulb to appear above my code. There it comes. Okay, so I find the light bulb and then I choose implement methods. It says you're going to implement four of these methods, so I'll click OK. All right, so now these are going to be our project here for the rest of the video. We're going to need two properties and a constructor for the base adapter. So we're going to need a variable called mActivity, which stands for myActivity, and that will be used as uh, part of our context settings. The next uh, property we'll need is a list. So we're going to have a myFriends object imported as well. Then we're going to create a constructor. So let's do a generate command and choose the two properties that we've just meant invented. Okay, so once we have a list here of myFriends, then the rest of these uh, functions will turn out a little bit more sensible. So let's say if we were going to use the function called getCount, that means how many items are in the list. So let's type in my friends dot get my friends list dot and there's the size command. So get count just tells me how many people are in the list. The next method that I have to implement is called get item. So we're going to get the item from the list at position, position. Now you should note here that when we send back the return statement, it is returning an actual uh, person. And the uh, type of return is set to object. So this will cause some trouble down the road. We're going to see an error and we're going to have to change this to person. But for right now, let's leave it here so that way we'll see the error come up. The next item is called get item ID, and I don't believe we need that for our current use. The last item is the most complicated of them. What this is going to do is send back a view or send back a collection of properties that we can use in this layout here called person one list. So our goal is to put a value to every one of these items in the list. So stick with me, we're gonna take quite a bit of code here. First of all, I'm going to create a new view object. I'm going to name it one person line. So one person line is the view object that corresponds to this layout. And then at the bottom of the list, when we're all done, we are going to return one person line. So we're going to use a new object called a layout inflator. And a layout inflator is designed to take a layout like this one, or any of these, and then it will turn it into its associated uh, classes or properties. So this is a new concept likely, so let's take a look at the developer tutorials or the references at android.com. So what is a layout inflator? It's a class that instantiates a layout XML file or any one of our forms that we've created into its corresponding view objects. So that's what an adapter is supposed to do. It's to take the XML file and line it up with a class of the view objects. So for this layout inflator, we're going to take the activity, M activity, and we're going to get system service here. And then we're going to take the, uh, con the variable called context, and we want the first option called layout inflator service. So what this will do is create a inflator that will be associated with the activity. 
Now we've got a casting problem here. It says you are required to, re to be uh, assigning this variable as a layout inflator and I only got an object. So casting is what we need. So let's go to the front here and type in layout inflator as the type of object and the error goes away. So we're going to use the inflator and dot inflate. Then we're going to specify which layout we want to inflate. So in this case it's r.layout and as you recall the name of the file is person one line. Now I've got some other errors. So the inflate command requires two more different parameters that we haven't supplied yet. So these guys are going to be the parents. So what is parent? Well parent came through to us as one of the parameters called view group. So whatever the parent of this thing is we're going to pass it along. The next item is called a boolean, true or false. And as you can see I've chosen false for the parameter called attach to root. So this is part of the documentation, just uh, you're going to use it the way I'm printing here anyway, so let's just follow along. So now this one person line is a reference to this um, layout right here. So we're going to uh, invent a new variable called TV name. And this is going to be taken as the um, text view name that's in the layout. So we're going to use find view by ID again, just like we've done in previous examples. So the third item that we're going to assign is the image view for the icon. So when we're done, we'll have a two, uh, two references to text views and one reference to an image view. So now the only job left is to assign text values to these two text views and then design a, uh, an image to the image view and return it. So we're almost to the end. So the three uh, statements that we're eventually going to execute are set text and then TV age gets a set text and then TV icon gets a set image resource. So now we have to put some actual values in there. So where are we going to get those? So the statement I'm looking for is to get a person object. So we'll define person p equals this class dot get item at position. So this should work. Except we have a problem here. It says we have a casting issue. It says it's requiring a person and it found an object. So there are two ways to fix this. One is, since we know that this is going to be a person, we could say please cast this to person and the error goes away. That's one way to do it. Another way is to come up to the get item and instead of just returning an object we tell it we guarantee that it's going to be a person coming back. And so now the function is working properly down here on line 50. Okay so we're halfway there. So now we can do set text. If we want to get the name of this person we do p dot get name. So far so good. How about the next one? Let's do p.getAge. That looks good too, but you should probably realize that this is an integer and when we set an integer as a string area, the program will crash. So we have to make sure that this gets converted to a string. So let's type in integer.toString and then enclose the age in parentheses. Okay, that's looking pretty good. What about these image resources? So what we need to do then is assign one of our icons to this view property. So as you recall, in the drawable folder we have all these icons that were imported at a previous step. So if I open one of them you can see it's a picture. So first of all we have to get a, a hold of those references. So we'll create an array called icon resource numbers and we'll make it a fixed length array. We're going to specify every element in the array, so we'll open it with a curly bracket. Type r.drawable and you get the, all the resources available to pick from. So we'll choose the first one called icon0101. Now we could type another one, we could say r.drawable icon01 underscore 02. And this will get slow and tedious, so let's do copy and paste.
All right, I've reached the end and you notice I'm at item 30. If I try to put in 31 and 32, you can see I get red letters here. There is no resource named 31 and 32, so my icons only go up to item 30. So let's delete the last two plus the comma. So we've got ourselves now an array with all of the resource ID numbers in it. So these are not one through 30. These are some long number that is the resource ID number, but they're stored in an array so we can quickly get to them. So the last item we want is TV icon set image resource. And now we want to get the icon resource numbers. And the icon that we're looking for is at position, position. So then this should return the one person line view. So all of this work here is to return a view object. And this should set up our array. Okay, I have an, I have an error in my list. Let's see where it wants to fix something. Oh, it looks like I missed a semicolon. Okay, so that pretty much finishes up the uh, adapter. So the adapter uses these four methods that are going to require a get count, get item, this one here is optional, and then finally we get get view. So get view is where all the work goes of translating values to the actual properties of our text views and icon views.